Minnesota is typically the top state in the nation when it comes to voter turnout. Both parties are counting on that as this, for this election as well. From the governor's race to attorney general to a number of congressional seats up for grabs, we have you covered this evening. Esme Murphy is at DFL headquarters in St. Paul. But we begin right now with Jennifer Merrily with the Republicans in Bloomington. Jen? Yes, and Frank, uh, Jeff Johnson is the Hennepin County Commissioner who is looking for a new title, Governor of Minnesota, and we are joined by Jeff Johnson right now. Um, the polls are about to close. How are you feeling going into 8 o'clock? I feel great, and there's nothing I can do now, so even if I didn't, it doesn't really matter, but it feels really good. We've been on the road for months now, and particularly the last... 10 days, I think we hit 62 or 63 different cities. There's a real appetite for change out there in Minnesota, so I, that gives me great hope, and we'll see what happens. I know you talked about the energy that you haven't felt in Minnesota before, um, that you think Minnesotans desire change. Yeah. What is it about that? You know, I think that, that a lot of Minnesotans are very concerned that there's little accountability in government right now, in state government with Minlars and Minsure and elder abuse and child care fraud. And we've got this history of good government, whatever you, however you define that. We've lost that in Minnesota. People, people want a government that's actually accountable again. That's what I'm hearing really across the political spectrum. What do you think this race is going to come down to? You know, I think it comes down to turnout. I mean, we're going to, you know, four years ago we had 50% turnout in Minnesota. It's going to be higher than that, no question. And it depends on who shows up. And, you know, we have no control at this point, so I hope for the best. Well, we'll be here with you throughout the night. We know we met your son earlier. Your family is here with you tonight. Yes. And uh, we'll be keeping on the poll, an eye on the polls as you do tonight. Great. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. And Esme Murphy is with the DFL. Esme, what's going on over there? Well, Jen, I can tell you this, people here are thrilled with these reports of record turnout for a midterm election throughout the state, especially in urban areas that are considered strongholds for the DFL. They think this bodes very well for them. Congressman Tim Walls, the DFL candidate for governor, has been here at the hotel for several hours. He is presumably with his family, and he is getting ready to watch the returns with his family. Congressman Keith Ellison is expected here at any moment. He, of course, is the embattled attorney general candidate. And a lot of people think that his race is going to be one of the closest of all. And just a few moments ago, U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar arrived here to the hotel to enormous cheers. Senator Klobuchar talked to the crowd briefly. She says this is a big night, but she takes nothing for granted. We have a tall order in Minnesota, given that we have the governor's race, two U.S. Senate seats, and major, major congressional races that the whole country is watching tonight. So I think some of the races, it'll be a late night, um, but stay tuned, and we are, we're feeling good about the evening. And Senator Klobuchar's race is not expected to be one of those close ones. In fact, it is expected to be one of the first to be called. She has been ahead in the polls by 20 to 30 points. Back to you, Frank. Okay, Esme, thank you very much. We have uh, Pat Kessler joining us right now. If you can quickly talk about the... Uh the record turnout benefiting Democrats. Yeah, the right now it looks like a huge turnout in the first district, southern Minnesota, the fifth district where a lot of Democrats live. That could help Democrats, but outstate, it's helping Jeff Johnson right now. All right. Thank you, Pat. And we're going to continue this online at WCCO.com. Well, in just one minute, uh, the polls will have closed in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Yeah, and there are quite a few races that could be called in a matter of minutes. WCCO political reporter Pat Kessler joins us now. So I, we're going to talk about some of the first races yeah. that you expect to be called, but I just heard the producer talking to us, and I think CBS is calling Amy Klobuchar, which is not that big not of a surprise. Not a surprise, no. I mean, top of the hour, the polls are now closed. Yes, uh, Amy Klobuchar uh, had a wide lead throughout this campaign. Uh, over Jim Newberger, a really good candidate, good guy also, uh, Republican Jim Newberger. Amy Klobuchar, though, uh, running another very, very strong campaign. I think all that's left now is to figure out how big the margin is. I've seen polls with her 20 points ahead, as many as 30 points ahead. This puts her in a very, very strong position if she is reelected, as we believe she will be. A very strong position, a player in Washington, as we saw during this summer. Uh, with the Kavanaugh hearings, also one of the most uh, bipartisan senators working with everybody from Lindsey Graham to uh, Lindsey Graham uh, to Mitch McConnell. So yeah, there we are. The 
You know, when we heard Amy Klobuchar, I uh, was surprised to hear her say we might be staying up late for some of these races because right before that, as May said, it looks like there's record turnout and the DFL feels good about that. So how do you balance those two things against each other? Well, there is a huge turnout, but it all depends on where you are and who it helps. So if it is in the Twin Cities area, that is actually going to help some of the Democrats. In the first district in southern Minnesota, that means you've got a lot of farmers, uh, you've got a lot of people in rural areas. And Jeff Johnson may be doing very well out there, and we don't know exactly where these votes are coming from quite yet. Northern Minnesota, again, we're seeing a lot of turnout big all over the state. In northern Minnesota, uh, not so much, not as much as in the other parts of the state. So that's another factor here. Democrats say that the bigger the turnout, the better it is for mm -hmm. them, but they say that all the time. And that's not, that, that's true. That is absolutely true. But uh, in, in rural Minnesota, greater Minnesota, outside the Twin Cities, Jeff Johnson could be racking up a lot of votes. Uh, we're talking about uh, voters turning now. I know the national exit poll, they talked 65%. This is the early exit poll, so that they, President Trump was a factor in the vote today. Yes, uh, that is absolutely true. 65 to 70 percent of people. So you're saying, let's say seven out of 10 people say they went to the polls today uh, because they wanted to vote on President Trump. Now, President Trump could have been talking about the economy. He could have been talking about the stock market, uh, the low unemployment, all these things which are really good for this country. Uh, but President Trump chose to talk about immigration and, uh, let's say, darker political issues. So they're voting because of President Trump, but what we don't quite know yet is whether they're voting in favor mm -hmm. of President Trump or against President Trump. And Trump said, this, the midterms are about me, so pretend I'm on the ballot even though I'm not. Yeah, and what's interesting too is also some of the exit polls that, that immigration wasn't the big issue. Isn't that, that was, interesting? Yeah. yeah, that wasn't what they were going. They were coming out. That was driving them out to vote. Well, you, the, the, you could go down the rabbit hole with all of this because this again is something that President Trump wanted to make an issue. But in fact, we saw that all voters, uh, Democrats and Republicans, but particularly Democrats, uh, think that health care is by far the most important issue. Uh, by I think it's a, a 40 percent or more think health care is the most important issue. When it comes to immigration, I think that was in the 20s, so uh, almost uh, half as less, so double uh, for, Im for health care uh, than for immigration. And so that is a gamble that may not have worked uh, for the Republicans. And I know that Republicans were pleading with the president to stop talking about immigration and the wall and the caravan. They wanted him to talk about health care and the economy. Mm -hmm. Pat, let's keep moving down the list. Well, if we talk about the 5th Congressional District here, John Lorson was reporting uh, from Ilan Omar's uh, headquarters, and he said that there are going to be a group of uh, national, international reporters at this event. Yeah, that's really something. I, I know that uh, the, she is not with the Democratic Party at their headquarter, their victory party, quote unquote, uh, tonight. Uh, she has her own setup. Uh, they have security. They've, they've had to set up all of these elaborate uh, media uh, uh, they've made all these uh, preparations for media from Japan, from Europe, from all over the world, uh, from Africa. She is going to make history tonight in the 5th Congressional District in Minneapolis. She is a Somali-born American. She is a Somali-American, the first uh, elected Somali legislator just a couple of years ago. Uh, we've been seeing her over the last couple of years. She's become a rock star, literally. She appears in a rock music video, uh, and uh, sh there is a documentary about her. So a lot of people following her fantastic story of coming from Somalia, living in a refugee camp, moving to the United States, becoming an American citizen, running for office and winning. And if she goes to Congress, yeah, there's going to be a lot of national attention. No uh, well, there already is. John Lawrenson was saying yeah. about reporters from Paris. Yeah, that's well, what I mean. They're, they're from all over the world. Yeah. I, I have to ask, though, because it's just a, I, it, so does she want to not share the stage with the rest of her DFL party? Is that okay. why she's doing her own thing? Because she's getting all this attention? Well, it to, seems weird to me. To, to be 100 percent honest, uh, we don't know the exact reason, but it causes a tremendous amount of commotion when uh, be because she has all of these people following her. Uh, it, it's almost like a Japanese baseball player, and the Japanese media follow baseball players all around the country. There's going to be literally dozens and dozens, maybe more than 100 uh, journalists following Ilhan Omar. Just that story hmm. tonight. Right. Are you talking about that? But I also think that uh, Dean Phillips from the 3rd Congressional District, one of the, the candidates there, that he's having his own yeah. separate party from. Right. 
And so there, there are a number, there are a number of that, step. and and it, it may or may not be because they want to appear on stage with someone. But logistically, a lot of this is really difficult to do. But mm -hmm. uh, we are sending a WCCO sending out uh, more than a dozen reporters, crews all over the state. Yes to different parts of the state, <laughs> northern Minnesota, western Minnesota, southern Minnesota, the Twin Cities. You know, one more, one more point about uh, the turnout in the Twin Cities. We're seeing very, very, very strong turnout in the 3rd District, and you mentioned uh, mm. Dean Phillips. And uh, that is probably going to help Tina Smith and Keith Ellison. So that will help their campaigns tonight. And so that's something we'll be watching tonight. Definitely. We didn't hear much about the fourth. I mean, Betty McCollum is She's uh, an had incumbent. That, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. The, the Ramsey County, uh, which is mostly the fourth district, uh, Ramsey County, uh, she has been a strong, that, that is a Democratic mm -hmm. congressional district. Uh, there's no doubt about yes. it. it. It is. Uh, very unusual. It's like the fifth district in Minneapolis and Hennepin County. Uh, Betty McCollum has been in office and she has run one winning campaign after another. So, yeah, we expect that to be called very, very early tonight, also. And the 6th Congressional District? Uh, sixth Tom Congressional, Emmer. yeah. No, Tom yeah. Emmer yeah. Is, uh, is a really interesting Second character. Second term, right? Yeah, it's, uh, so he'll be uh, his third term here. Yeah. And uh, so Tom Emmer is someone who has really uh, fit in, moved into the role of uh, member of Congress. Uh, he fits his district. The 6th District, which is uh, the northern part of the Twin Cities, the suburbs, all the way up to St. Cloud. Uh, he is somebody who has settled into the job and uh, does it without a lot of fanfare, but does uh, really hard, good work uh, for uh, his district. So he's somebody who is, we, we expect to be called early tonight as well, the, his race. He will likely be the winner of that race. I should mention while we're on WCCO.com and on Facebook right now, uh, I, I posted uh, a link to our results page. So as they start coming in, uh, that's a great way to find it or just stay with us online. And yeah. of course, stay with yeah. us on TV as well. I think there's a lot of options on that. Definitely. As Frank yeah. said, stay with the WCCO online on TV as we continue to follow all the big races and campaign 2018. Senate. She has been a congresswoman there and beat Phil Bredenson, who had been a former governor of that state, and Marsha Blackburn running as a conservative.